You can grab your seats, we're going to try to get started. Good morning, I'm Don DeMeo with the Lakewood Branch Business Alliance. I'm the CEO and we're a group, if you don't know who the alliance is, that connects businesses in our two county region. Um, you'll see businesses from as far away as Fort Myers and, and all the way up as north as Tampa. So thank you for being here today. It's my job to get us started and keep us at least on time in the beginning. But I wanted to give a shout out to a couple of our um, sponsors. Um, John Holtz with Plunkett Research Architects. So uh, our presenting sponsor and the way we were able to actually get this event started. John is our chair of our economic development committee and is um, the springboard to being sure that we get you involved with our youth. Um, our breakfast sponsor, Lori Kidder. Lori is with Car, Ring, Car Riggs Ingram CPA and Advisors, and Lori has been um, involved with helping get to this morning to where we're at as well, so thank you, Lori. And our corporate sponsor, um, I got a call from Bank of America after they saw the first uh, announcement going out and said we wanna be involved and help uh, put the event on as well. It gave us the ability to actually increase some of our capacity and um, thanks to Bank of America for being our corporate sponsor. So it's my pleasure to introduce um, John Holtz. John Holtz from Plunkett Racing Architects and John's going to carry us forward this morning. Thank you for being here and I hope you enjoy the program. Thank you, John. Absolutely thrilled to springboard everybody this morning, get your coffee, get your octane. One last sponsor is late to the show, and the reason that he's here, his name is Brian Finnerty, he's with the players, so thank you to the players. We want to broadcast this to all the students who didn't get up early this morning. We're so glad to see the, the parents and students here. You're really the reason that we're putting this on, because the businesses get it. Um, PRA's been designing um, technical schools uh, with our partners uh, for decades, but uh, it's, it's very important for, uh, for parents and students to, to understand the equally relevant pathways available to them. And, and so without further ado, I wanna get this program underway. And so uh, Josh Matlock is here with, with Career Source, and he's gonna tee up this fantastic um, set of panelists this morning uh, for you to all engage and take lots of notes. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, John, and I just want to start off by saying thanks to Lakewood Ranch Business Alliance for pulling together this distinguished panel. Uh, we're so happy to be here, and um, some of the things we want to do is uh, jump into this idea of, of busting the myth that there's only one pathway for to find success in, in life and in career. And so, with us today to help us bust this myth is Jackie Dazelski, who's the president and CEO of the Manatee Chamber of Commerce, which is also the backbone organization for Reach Manatee, which is our local college access network in Manatee County. Also, who's gonna speak with us and share her story is B. Spurl, director of finance at Bidencraft Custom Cabinetry. And then also we have Omar Edwards, assistant director at Manatee Technical College and Michael Indy, with the, he's the assistant director at State Suncoast Technical College. Terry Clark, Dean of Lifelong Learning and Workforce Development State College of Florida. And Thomas Williams, director of Planet Sarasota, which is the local college access network for Sarasota County. Uh, and is the backbone organization for that particular organization is the Sarasota Education Foundation. So let's go ahead and give this panel a round of applause here. So what we hope to do, kind of the outline of what we're going to cover today and some of the takeaways is hopefully by the end of this program you'll have uh, a good understanding that there is no one path for anyone, right? There are hundreds of possible potential paths for you out there and that we hope that you leave with a, a basic understanding of what the labor market is out there presently, what's happening in the labor market, so what you can expect 
as you're starting a career or maybe you are looking for what's next in your own career. And then we're gonna provide you some examples here locally of uh, some stories of people who bust that myth that there is only one way to find success. So we also have some folks here that will give a snapshot of, of the many opportunities here of other pathways. And then we'll close it by providing some next steps. So what are some things you can do next after you leave this, this meeting this morning, this, this group, uh, to go ahead and, and, and start your own journey? And then we'll end it with uh, some questions and answers. So if you have some questions, be sure and jot those down or keep them in mind so we have some time at the end of this program that you can ask them. All right. But let's go ahead and get this started with Jackie Dazelski. Uh, Jackie, can you tell us what is the state of our current labor market and can you share with us what we're seeing in with regard to the growing demand for credentials and skills? Sure, thank you and good morning everyone. So many familiar faces and so appreciative of the Lakewood Ridge Business Alliance for convening on this topic and it's great to see not only business leaders in the room but parents and students um, as well to hear this information. So um, I drew the short straw and get to share some statistics with you this morning. Um, so I do have some notes uh, just because when I'm quoting numbers, I like to try to be as accurate as possible. But in looking at labor market data as recently as yesterday, there are more than half a million open posted jobs in Florida right now. So when we're talking about the pathways to success, um, as Joss mentioned and as all of the promotion for this morning's gathering indicated, there are so many diverse pathways forward for young people, for adults who are looking to retool or reskill uh, to find the right points for their future um, success. The Florida Chamber estimates that by 2030, we will have four million more people in Florida than we have in 2020. So over 10, the next 10 years, nine years now, we're expecting four million more people in Florida, which means we'll need two million more jobs in order to meet that type of growth uh, that the business community, as well as our new residents and our existing residents will need. So think about that. And think about the economic goals that we see in both Manatee and Sarasota counties related to high skill, high wage positions. And we'll know that this conversation has been going on for decades and it will continue to go on uh, for decades. Um, and the number one issue for businesses right now is talent. So, you know, every headline we see, um, and as governments at all levels are trying to ensure that they're setting the right stage for future success for businesses and, and individuals, we know that we want Florida to have the best trained workforce um, in the country. When you look at where there is great need and a lack of supply within the labor market, and you cross-reference that with where high-wage, high-skill opportunities are, you see four or five main areas emerging currently, and I'm sure my colleagues up here and many of you in the audience um, will not be surprised by these. Healthcare, business, finance, uh, engineering. And those, er those uh, industries often pay significantly more than the average wage in any community as well. And so when we hear about the opportunities for young people and adults to retool. The, that is a focus of economic development, is finding the right talent pipeline for those types of industries. But as we said, there's no one path and no right way to do that. Um, it's really where you want to be. And I'm more thrilled to be hearing from the colleagues that are up here on the panel about those opportunities because when you think about the efforts of the, of the LCANs, the local college access networks of which Reach Manatee serves Manatee County, Planet Sarasota is serving Sarasota County, but when you think about the collaboration that's required for both of these efforts, it's the same individual, same educational institutions that serve both of our communities, and that is such a strength that Manatee and Sarasota County are so tied together when it comes to the higher ed, post-secondary um, environment. But the goal is that Manatee and Sarasota counties will increase the post-secondary attainment of our population in high quality credentials. And what does that mean? We're gonna hear more this morning about that. That means certainly four-year degrees, it means two-year degrees, but as importantly, and maybe even more beneficial from a number of aspects are those high quality credentials and certificate programs that we're, we're gonna hear about. Um, an important part of that is the FAFSA. So I see many students, at least here to my left, your right, um, FAFSA is extremely important to bringing dollars into the community 
for young people and adults to be able to access higher education. Um, and that is one of the main tenets of why Re, Re, um, Planet Sarasota and Reach Manatee exist is this idea um, of having a, the ability to pursue post-secondary education and often, often the economics of that are, are important and so the FAFSA is, the, is one of the most important steps for any of you that know high school seniors, recently graduated seniors or adults that are, want to go back and pursue post-secondary um, education, ensure that they have filled out their FAFSA. Um, right now, Florida, I think we're at about 42.5% last time I checked in, in the number of high school seniors that completed the FAFSA. So less than half. And that is millions of dollars that are left on the table, Pell money that is free money um, for people to, to pursue um, their education. And I'll leave you with just one more statistic because I didn't keep my timer, timer on this morning. Josh just cut me off. Um, right now, 60%, um, it's estimated that 60% of Florida jobs will require an education beyond high school. But it's estimated that um, almost less than 53% of Floridians will have that. So there's a significant gap for our community to band together and ensure that we um, are able to meet the needs of the future. And Josh, hopefully that was enough statistics to kick us off. <laughs> Thanks, Jack. That was, uh, that was great. I think we uh, got our numbers, and I think we're ready to go. Um, so at the very beginning, you know, we talked about busting the myth. And what a myth is, it's a, it's a narrative. It's a story that we tell ourselves uh, individually, we tell our, our kids, we tell our family members. And um, the, the, the situation here is that there's not one story. There are many stories. And so next, what we're going to have is... Uh, our good friend, Dee Spurl, come up and tell us her story of one of her family members and how that story is not consistent with the myth that we're trying to bust here. So, B. Hello, everybody. Thanks, Hi. Josh. Um, John Holtz and I have been friends for a very long time, and our children grew up in Milwaukee together. He asked me to come today to talk about my story and how it fits into this wonderful panel of springboards to careers. My husband and I are both college graduates. We're professionals in the accounting field. Um, we, when we had children, we expected them to follow the same path that we did. We went to high school, we went to college, and we started our careers. That was the anticipation. That's what the American dream is. We have three children. Um, our daughter, Alex, uh, went to high school in Wisconsin. She graduated with high honors. She went to the University of Wisconsin in Milwaukee, majoring in civil engineering. She has a great job as a project engineer with a manufacturing company in Milwaukee. She did the same path. She did the high school, she did the college, and now she has a career. Our son Jacob uh, graduated from Lakewood Ranch High School, uh, class of 2020, gotta love him. Um, he spent his first year, he, he had very early aspirations to go into the medical field. So he worked very hard in high school, got great grades, um, was able to get into USF, he's in biomed, he finished his freshman year last year, go Bulls. And he um, is you know, on his path for this high school, the college, and going into a career, and he's very happy. Our youngest son is Josh. Josh is very bright, he's very creative, he's very funny, he's very hardworking, but he wasn't very strong in school. Even in elementary and in middle school especially, he really struggled. Um, he has ADD, he, um, while he was very bright, he just didn't have that interest in school. He just wasn't academic, and we really had to pull him through elementary. But we still had that thought for him that you're gonna graduate from high school, you're gonna find a college, and you're gonna have a career. And he would say to us, I don't think I wanna go to college. And then as he got older, he said, you know, I'm not going to go to college. <laughs> we said, okay, okay, that's okay, buddy. Just find something that you're interested in. What are you interested in? And, and pursue that. So one of the things that he was interested in was culinary, because he loves to cook. So he kind of dabbled with that, and we thought, great, a chef in the family, that's, that's we like that. And then the other thing that he thought about was cabinetry, because we own a cabinet company, Minecraft Custom Cabinetry, and he did come work for us for a little while. Um, he was a very good team player. He was responsible. Um, he was eager to learn. He was hands-on. All the things that a tradesperson is, is really, need, that's what it's needed for a tradesperson. It's the qualities you want as an employer. Um, but we still said, well, but keep finishing high school, and, and then we'll talk about it then. We were very, very stubborn about our aspirations because 
it's everything that we knew. We really had no idea of what else was out there for him, so we just kept on that path. And then sometime in his sophomore year, uh, after he'd been in Lake Branch for about a year and a half, um, his anxiety really kicked in. There's 2,400 kids at Lake Branch High School, and for somebody who has a learning issue and who socializes but not in really big, large groups, it was a problem for him. So we, um, as a family, decided that that wasn't the path that he should take. So we talked to some counselors, we went to MTC, and we talked to some counselors there, and we made a decision as a family to take him out of high school. He went into, we were gonna put him into a GED program, and he decided to go online and try to do it himself. He got all four sections done in four weeks, and, um, and then he enrolled at MTC, and he had a little bit of a gap time before he could start, so he came back and worked for us. And he continued to get the skills needed um, uh, for what he was planning on doing. He uh, went into the HVAC program in 2019-2020, got a certificate in 2020, so technically an undergraduate in 2020. <laughs> um, he uh, could not get a job initially because he was only 17. And most businesses, you cannot be insured under their business plan if you drive a vehicle unless you're 18. So he came back to work for us again for a little while, <laughs> which was fine, we loved having him. And then as soon as he turned 18, he went on his job search. He was out there maybe a couple of weeks, talked to two or three firms, got a job offer right away. Actually got two, picked the one he liked. Um, and he currently is working for Badger Bob's, their home servicing company. He loves it, he has his own vehicle, he does service calls. They have learning uh, opportunities for him to continue that. He loves it, he's happy, he's successful. That's the key, he's successful. And he's in his zone. And, and that was hard for us to find the right zone for him. That's his zone. So I was thrilled to hear about this panel because again, as a business owner, we, we struggle with finding tradespeople because everybody's on that path. And it's not necessarily the right path and it's not always the best path. So I'm really excited for this panel to tell you all the opportunities, and thank you for listening to my story. Thank you, Dean. Appreciate that. Okay, next uh, here on the panel, we're going to have Omar Edwards share with us here. Um, Omar, can you? Let us know what are some of the career paths available at Mantic Technical College and, uh, and maybe some student success stories that come to mind. Absolutely. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Manatee Technical College, we pride ourselves in career in a year. You know, it doesn't take too long to get the skills that you need. Skills for work, skills for life. We have multiple pathways. We're gonna talk a little bit about our clusters and our programs are broken down by cluster. Architecture and construction, arts, AV, technology and communication, business management and administration, hospitality and tourism, health sciences, which is located at our East Campus, and human services, law, public safety and security, it's located at our East Campus, manufacturing, transportation, distribution, and logistics. So we have a total of 53 programs, career in a year, some of them you can earn in one year, some of, some of them as early as four months. When we talk about success stories, we have them. I will start with Tareen Lundy. She's a pharmacy technician student, class of 2021. She works at Walgreens, she came in completed the program, now matriculated to Walgreens and was actually hired before she even graduated from the program. The one that we're really most proud of, and, and, and her quote is, and we, we took a quote from her, MTC gave me the tools, gave me the resources, and the confidence to finally make strides toward having the life that a father would be proud of. How exciting is that? Give her a round of applause. <laughs> Cecilia Williams, LPN class of 2021. She works for United Health Group and Tranquil's, uh, uh, Tranquil Shores as a nurse practitioner. But look at her journey. She started as an LPN, then she became an RN at State College of Florida. 
which is formerly was formerly MCC, Manatee Community College. She matriculated to St. Pete College to earn her master's degree. And then her postmasters was at the University of Miami. A key statistic with her is she graduated with a postmasters degree debt free. Yeah. How nice is that? She was give her a round of She was able to take the technical degree and allow it to pay for the two year degree and the two-year degree and the technical degree to pay for the four-year degree and the postmasters. My story, 1993, I graduated from Southeast High School. I was afforded the opportunity to have a full athletic scholarship to Ole Miss University. So my, my college was paid for. So I was excited, I believe what everyone else told us, that you get a college degree, the plethora of jobs that are out there and available would be there for you. So I was excited. Not only did I earn one degree, I had another year of eligibility in college left, so I matriculated with another degree. And so I had two undergrad degrees, so I was for sure, and I didn't have to pay for them, so I was for sure I was gonna land a job. So I went out and I was very aggressive. I paid $34 in postage, sent out 100 resumes. That's a lot of resumes. And I just say, I'm going to sit back and wait on the job opportunity to just fly in. <laughs> Guess what? They didn't. I had two job offers out of 100 applications, college graduate. And I remember it just like it was yesterday. I went down to Columbus, Mississippi. I grabbed my briefcase at that time. We didn't have portfolios. We had a briefcase, and I had my resume in there. And here I come, nice suit, nice tie, looking good going all the way down to Columbus, Mississippi for my first interview. During the first interview, I did really well. He said, I got some good news and I got some bad news. The good news is you're hired. The bad news is I can only pay you $16,000 a year. That, the degree at that time was $150,000. So if I would have paid it out of pocket and my parents would have had to mortgage their homes and things of that nature to sacrifice for that degree, I'd have been pretty upset because the job opportunities didn't match what I needed. And what I was told is I didn't have any hands-on practical experience, therefore they didn't have to pay me. So then he was real creative. He said, well, since benefits don't start for 90 days, how about we forego the benefits and then we'll pay you $19,000 a year. Think about that opportunity. So as we begin to think about multiple pathways, it's multiple ways that you can get to be successful. A lot of times, a more mature student will perform better in college later in life, because I guarantee you, Omar Evers at 18 is much better than Omar Evers at 23. So if you enter college at a later time in your life, chances are you may get better results. The current results, and stop me if I need to stop, you know, but 64% of the students that are enrolled in college, only 24.6% actually graduate. So when we think about that, it's not based on their ability. It's based on socially, can you make good decisions in real time? And, and we know that as parents, as business owners. Can your son or daughter make good decisions? If they can't make their bed at home, chances are they're not gonna make their bed when they go to college. So we need to truly understand that. Thank you. Thank, thanks, Omar, we appreciate that. Some good stories in there. Uh, next, let's go on to uh, Mike Indy. And so Omar gave us Manatee Technical College version, and then now we're going to get Sarasota County Sun Coast Technical College. All right, good morning, everybody. That's uh, that's a tough act to follow, but I'm going to try Omar. Uh, I, I do not make my bed. <laughs> but I was responsible, but I didn't make my bed. Um, just like MTC, we are very lucky in this region, in Manatee, Sarasota area, both Manatee Technical College and Sun Coast Technical College in Sarasota and Northport. We have a branch in Northport now. Um, we have great opportunities for 
high school students, juniors and seniors, if we have younger students here that are in high school right now, um, you can still come to our campus and it costs you nothing when you're in high school. Um, you just have to be on track to graduate at your home high school, but you can come to our facilities as high school students and have these same opportunities. And once you leave high school, you can go right out into those careers that we're talking about. And then those employers that you work for, a lot of the bigger employers have college reimbursement and tuition um, forgiveness and programs to pay for your tuition at school. So just like the student he was speaking of, that person can go to school um, and come out debt free and continue to work up and you're not working the McDonald's job at minimum wage, you're actually in a profession that you're interested in and continuing to grow in that profession. Um, so those are really cool things. Some of the things we offer at Suncoast Technical College, very much the same. Um, we offer business programs, we offer um, computer-based technical programs, offer health, industrial programs, we have all of the different trades. Um, some of the other things though, since we kind of hit on those, when you're looking at short-term programs too, we offer a um, fast track program that we offer through Career Edge and Suncoast, uh, where you can come to us for two months at night, three nights a week, and you're leaving our programs, whether it's HVAC, plumbing, marine, um, uh, what was it, or manufacturing, we're just starting that off, that's kicking off in July. Those programs are free to the students, so you just have to enroll for them and qualify, and qualifying just 99% of people qualify. It's not a funding thing, it's really a felony thing. Um, but those programs are free to students. And you leave there and the employers that we have backing those programs are looking to hire those students as soon as they graduate. Um, in two months, three nights a week for a few hours, you're learning the basic entry level skills to get into a program. Then you can come back and join our daytime program. You can move on to SCF. You can move on to whatever that opportunity is, whether it's in-house training for automotive. Um, we have probably I think 50 now, 50 or 60 different entry level automotive people between Gettle Group, Sun, or, um, Suncoast Group, or Sunset Automotive Group, Matthew Curry's board. We have so many of our young students that have come through those programs and they're now moving up through their brand specific Ford or you know, Porsche, whatever, whatever car you're interested in working through those. So those are great programs that we work, um, we work through throughout the year. So now one hit on those. Some of our success stories, you know, I look back and if you go onto our website, there's, you can watch these people actually speak about this on YouTube, um, where they, we've, we've posted them on the website though, so you can see. Um, the first one, we, she just graduated last year, Katrina. Um, she went through our Fast Track HVAC program. So in two months, she was hired on by Badger Bobs, um, and she has her own truck now. She's making service calls. She's come back to us at night, so now she's in our apprenticeship program. Um, so she just finished, I believe, her first year through the apprenticeship program. So it's kind of cool to do a video on the program and she's, while we're talking to the new students in the fast track program, she's sitting behind us in class at night in the apprenticeship program working on becoming a master HVAC tech so that when she's done with this program, she has the earning potential of over 100 grand a year when you're in the HVAC world. Um, I didn't have that potential with a master's degree coming out of USF as a teacher. I made less than half of that. So. Uh, when you think about earning potential, young lady with a family starts a program, two months later, she's already in an apprenticeship program, and now she's got that earning potential within a couple of years, which is pretty pretty remarkable. And very similar story as well with Katrina. She's in our, or not Katrina, I'm sorry, Elena, in our plumbing program. She went through our plum, plumbing program. She works for Cool Today now. Um, they actually gave her her own vehicle. She's the only one I think that has a pink vehicle. So they got her a pink Cool Today van, which is pretty cool. And uh, she was sharing in her story that you watch, um, you know, she, again, I like to talk numbers when you're talking to kids, they want to know what is my earning potential. Um, she is three years out of the program making over $75,000 a year. So it's pretty remarkable results for young lady right out of school pretty quick within a couple of years. Again, most of us didn't start out at that within a couple of years of our degree. So it's just, it's a great pathway. Um, like we said, everything with us is financially Driven, so I mean, when you come to us, it's Pell Grants. So parents that are out there, you're not, most likely not gonna pay a whole lot to come to our schools. Our most expensive programs, I believe, are 8,000 at either of our two campuses for practical nursing or for automotive just because of the tools that you get. But you're gonna take those tools with you into your career. And those things are Pell eligible. That's money you don't pay back to the government. You don't have a $80,000, $100,000 plus student loan. So 
it's really important to know and make sure you're filling out that FAFSA. Even if you think you make too much, you may still get something. And then there's services like Career Edge, Career Source, um, different scholarships that are local that if you just apply for them or come see us, we'll guide you to those so that you walk away with no debt. Our goal is that you go get that job, which we're gonna help you find, because I'm telling you the employers in the room and around that area are calling us daily asking, how many grads do you have in this program or that program? They're constantly looking for young people to start working. And really, for you young people that are in the room, they're looking for someone that's just gonna put the cell phone down mm -hmm. and that's gonna be focused and take pride in their work. If you can do those three things and show up on time, um, <laughs> they're going to train you and they're going to enjoy having you because that's, that's really their biggest concern. They know we're gonna give them the skills you need to work. They just need you to come in and do the work, but it's there for you, so I uh, definitely, challenging young people in the room to take advantage of any of the opportunities we have up here or at any other school that's not here currently, but the jobs are there. You just be there to work and be successful. All right, thanks, Mike. Before uh, we go on to the next uh, panelist here, I just want to be sure and point out my colleague, Christy Hoskinson. He mentioned uh, Career Edge, and so if you're interested in some of the programs with, for Career Edge, she's here, so come go see her after the program, okay? Uh, so next, let's see. We talked about Manti Technical College, Suncoast Technical College. I think the theme here is lifelong learning. Mm -hmm. You're gonna be learning for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. These are great places to start. Uh, Terry, can you give us an idea of where State College of Florida fits into this landscape? Sure, um, thank you for joining, or thank you for having me today. Every time I hear Mike and Omar talk about the opportunities, I'm like, no. <laughs> can, I, can I do marine automotive? Um, because I, I think, you know, even 25 years ago, when I was having these type conversations as a student going in, we overlooked the trades. It was university education. And so my story is just like Omar's, you know, I was a first year teacher and I worked at the Gap at night, you know, to make sure that I had enough income coming in for my bills. Um, and when, um, when I transitioned from being a teacher, I was a school counselor, and I used to tell my students all the time, and it still rings true today, my skills pay my bills. That's very simple. But you think about your credentials, you think about your skills, you think about your diplomas, that articulates to the income you're, you're bringing in. So um, State College Florida, we have three campus locations. We have Venice, Lakewood Ranch, and then Bradenton. We award um, associate degrees, so that is typical two-year degrees, and then we have bachelor four-year degree programs. But in theme of today's program, I really want to spend my time talking about the next step after you leave MTC or STC. It is really true that the three of us are community partners. Um, it's the, it's the hand-holding. You know, when an individual leaves MTC or STC, they have opportunities at State College for them. And what I mean by that is the word articulation. And that simply means we award you college credit for the coursework you've completed at one of the technical colleges. Oftentimes, if you come to State College Florida for your associate's degree, it's four years, I mean, four semesters, two years. But if you're leaving a technical college, one whole semester is completed. We have articulation agreements for every single program that is offered at a technical college. That's huge. Um, oftentimes people come in and they'll say, Terry, I don't have two years. And the next question will be, are you a completer of Vanity Technical or STC? Well, yes. Well, then you might only have a year and a half. But also in that time, when you complete uh, your career certification at MTC or STC, you already know the world of work. You've already had that hands-on application. And then when you come to us, it's just a deeper dive. Immediately, we will put you in an internship. Internship opportunities are wonderful for the student and the employer. The employer, it's your free job bank. You can try this individual out for 12 weeks, 16 weeks, and see if this is a fit. Um, you know, I love the story, I think it was Cecilia, LPN to RN to nurse practitioner. That happens every single semester. Or, you know, as Mike was saying, um, a advanced manufacturing certification now leads to an associate's degree in engineering technology. They have a really good job, and then their employer comes back and pays for them to complete their four-year engineering degree. 
And so when we really think about the future, I want you to think about stackable. Please don't think about, you know, when I think about going on a diet, I gotta go from this weight to drop 20 pounds and I have three weeks. No, that's not realistic. Think about one year certification, work, associate's degree, continued work, employer helps you with the bachelor's degree. Um, we are fortunate to have recruiters in the technical colleges every month because what the technical colleges do very well are the wraparound services. Let's talk about your transportation. Let's talk about your childcare. Let's talk about job placement. And so we partner with MTC and STC and have that career counselor, career advisor in, on their campus saying, you've done it. You've completed it. You have the skills, you have the ability. Now let me hold your hand and guide you to the next stage, which would be an associate's degree at State College Florida. Um, again, we are like STC, we partner with Career Edge. We have fast track opportunities based on what employers need. Both MTC and STC, here's a prime example, have a CNA, Certified Nursing Assistant Program. But especially through the pandemic, the employer said, we do not have enough CNA workers. So Christy and I, we partnered with Career Edge, and lo and behold, State College Florida is in the CNA business just to meet the industry demand because our technical college partners didn't have enough seats for the people needed to fill this job. Again, we are sitting in a great place in Florida as far as jobs and educational partners. So I just encourage all of you, think about the opportunities. Thank you. All right, thanks. Thank you. And just uh, something to keep in mind that, you know, all these programs that we've learned about here today, uh, through FAFSA or through scholarships, through Chris or Suncoast or Career Edge, most all these programs can be paid for, right? So these are great opportunities. Uh, next, Thomas, can you uh, kind of give the, the crowd here next steps on, so once we leave here today, what are some next steps and what can they expect? <laughs> okay, so let me just start off by uh, thanking again the Lakewood Branch Business Alliance for this opportunity and to just be a part of this very distinguished panel. Um, young people, you are blessed to be in this area um, where you have such high levels of collaboration between the schools, the community, and all around you. It's, it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful opportunity. Don't miss the big picture. If you were looking at jobs a year ago, a year and a half ago, you were looking at high unemployment. We had a panel discussion and I asked Josh, I said, Josh, tell me about the unemployment. This was back in April of last year and we were just talking about the record unemployment levels here. Fast forward to today, there are jobs and as you just drove up going here, and I didn't even know this existed back here, there are signs out there, hiring now. There are opportunities that are before you. There are different types of markets. Some markets are employer markets, some markets are employee markets. You have the baby boomer generation <laughs> that is retiring, they hit some of the pandemic, they said, let me get out of here early, and then you have more that are keep going. Generation X that I am in is a smaller generation than the baby boomer generation. The generation Z is smaller than the generation X. All right, so the point being, there are going to be more jobs based on demographics that are available to you. The big question for you, will you be ready for them? So the two words I give you is be intentional and be opportunistic. By being intentional, You've heard all the things going on. You can prepare yourself for those jobs. And as has been clearly stated, there are multiple pathways to success. So the key then is, what is the best path for your student, for your child, your family? What is the best path for you? At the Education Foundation, we have um, four student success centers that we run in collaboration with the district. <coughs> Um, those are places where you can work with a college and career advisor to talk about what is it best for me. So you can do assessments on your personality, assessments on your skills, and just see what's the best match. If you've gone to MTC, if you've gone to Suncoast Technical, I know the pandemic, everything was locked down, but if you go now, 
check out the situation, look at the environment and just see, is it a great match? They have wonderful brochures that tell you all the jobs. Uh, speaking of Career Edge, in partnership with REACH and Career Edge, we had a beautiful, and I'm out of my in-person meeting zone, or I brought a few, uh, we had a beautiful guide called Where Are the Jobs? And it just lists here are the various different jobs, what they pay, what's the educational requirements for them. But the wonderful world today is you don't have to go to a library and spend a week in the bottom of the library. You can pick up your phone and Google. You can do all sorts of research. So I would start with being very proactive, visiting your college and career advisors, talking about what's best for me. Is it best that I am getting a high value certificate? Is it best that I go off for my AA? Is it best that I'm looking for a BA? Whichever path it is, or it might be a military career. What is best for you at this timing? Then do your research. Start visiting these campuses, all very close. Take a look at it. Just get an understanding of what's going on. People are willing to share and do tours with you and to uh, disperse a lot of information. So it's a great opportunity to get informed and be prepared so that you can make the right choice. Jackie led off by saying, um, 60, we believe by the year 2030, actually probably 2025, that you're gonna need, 60% of our workforce is gonna need an education beyond high school. Right now, 42.5% have a, a AA or above. Add another 10% for a high value certificate. That still leaves a gap of about 7.5%. So I heard Josh say this, and I will just echo it. Be a lifelong learner. I was with the uh, Boys and Girls Club yesterday, so stop me if I run that far. I was with the Boys and Girls Club on Monday, excuse me, and they asked a question. What was the best advice you've ever received, and what was the best advice you ever gave? It's the same. Be a lifelong learner, be a continuous learner. In this age of machine learning, artificial intelligence, and robotic automation, the world that we're living in is changing daily. I can guarantee you this, the workforce of today, tomorrow will be different than the workforce for today. So you have to make sure you're continuing to take advantage of the opportunities. Get your certificate, continue to upskill, work with the rapid credentialing, work with your employers for your education, continue to learn. You may start off as a machinist and love it, and then say, you know what, I'd like to be a manager and go to state college and understand how to be a manager. And then come out and say, you know what, they don't make these machines right. I'd like to be the engineer that designs these machines <laughs> and go to USF and get that degree. So continual learning and you will stay ahead. All right, we have some time for some questions. Anybody have any questions? Anybody want to kick this off first? Questions to the panel? Yes, sir. What's the dual enrollment opportunities? Dual enrollment, dual enrollment opportunities. Can they take that? So, the dual enrollment opportunities, let me ask you this. What grade are you in? I'm sorry? 11. Going into 11. So, for I believe both schools, I'll tell you, for Sarasota County, you can start attending our schools your 11th and 12th grade year. Um, that way, you get your your credits out of the way your freshman sophomore year, and then it, it, you know you don't take you don't take the electives. You come to our schools for half a day. We have transportation if you don't drive. Um, I believe that's the same for Manatee. Um, and then you can pick one of our 40, 50 different programs that you're interested in. So most of those programs you can complete within the two years of high school, since you're only coming half a day, it's a, usually a one-year program for an adult. You don't typically pay for, you don't pay for tuition, you don't pay for the books. Um, there may be some small supplies, but it's very minimal. Um, and then you come in and you work right alongside with the adults. And you know, one of the things I didn't mention was just the state-of-the-art state equipment that are at both campuses that you actually work with the real deal cars if you're an automotive motors with boats and, and the actual boats themselves whether it's um, up in our operating room if you want to go and become a surge tech so there's just so many different opportunities depending on the career path you want to go if you're in emt firefighting nursing you're going to go to clinical sites and work actually at hospitals and work um, on the on the fire truck or on the ambulance and work with those professionals so but 
the opportunity for you, you need to speak to your counselor. We're getting into the summer. Some programs are full. I will tell you that at both of our campuses, there is such a high need for workforce training that we're doing quite well and enrollments are pretty high. So you need to speak to your counselor, make sure you're on track to graduate, make sure you got great attendance and behavior, and um, most likely we'll get you into a program that you want to get into. And you can do that your junior year. And if for some reason the program you did, do not want or isn't available or you don't need the credit you need at the moment, you can bust your butt your 11th grade year and get in your 12th grade year with us. I don't think, you know, give a round of applause. <laughs> the only thing that I would add to that is, uh, be a donut, um, make sure you're on track to graduate. That's why it's so important to talk to the freshmen and the eighth grade students as well because it's all in how you start. Your freshman year is so critical that you need to build that foundation. And then in your junior and senior year, we, you receive elective credits. So naturally, if you need to make up core classes, then you will not be able to dual enroll. That's why it's so important to stay in connect, you know, stay in connection with your guidance counselor so that you're on track to graduate and then you can dual enroll uh, in your junior and senior year. We did have a student from Bayshore High School, I uh, build on this as well that came into our HVAC program, completed the HVAC program, and now he's going on to Kennesaw State University, and he's gonna work as an HVAC, in HVAC on the weekends, making $30 an hour to pay for his degree. That's a great question. Uh, let's see, we have time for some more, some more questions. Anybody, yes sir? Yes, I'm a student who is out of town completing a program, how can I find career resources in this area? Great. So what kind of career resources do you just want? Are you wanting a particular I'm program? I'm in the information system technology field and I have uh, a couple of my, I have two associates already and I'm wondering how I can find resources in this area. Absolutely. So, I mean, I think Apply that. what you could do is you connect with uh, State College of Florida, look what programs are available there. Uh, online and then also you can check out MTC and STC to see what they have available uh, and then if something's of interest to you then also there is funding available to pay for those so you could come to Career Source Suncoast to get a scholarship to pay you know we, we pay up to five thousand dollars a year uh, a year for two years for programs um, and then also there's uh, uh, money through Career Edge as well so I would uh, start with the programs that are available that interest you. Maybe even uh, you can uh, schedule some time to go by, tour the campus, I and mean, they'd be happy to have you come by and take a look at the facility and the program, show you everything, so yeah. Okay, and you have different ranges of programs with different uh, lengths of time, because I'm already finishing a bachelor's right now, and I'm wondering if I can take something short here that will help me springboard into a career in this area. Is that? Yeah, do y'all have any input to um, say close the board? Yeah, sure, I'll jump on that. Absolutely. Um, we have college and career counselors. I think that's a great conversation of, you have this bachelor's degree, where do you want to go next? And we would really probably look at some of our one semester workforce certifications to find those industry credentials. You need to earn, you already have the degree, wonderful. And so what are the employers looking for as far as jobs around here? Is it, I'm just going to use IT, CompTIA certification, Cisco, you know, if it's manufacturing, it might be some type of production technician. So absolutely, um, you will we'll connect and I'll connect you with the council and we can sit down and have that conversation right. and you can tour one of the campuses. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, and that, that would just also add that we have a, at Career Source, we have a new program through a company called Metrics and it has a lot of online courses uh, that you could, so if you need, want to do some, fill some time, there's a lot of technology courses that help prepare you for certifications. So if you want to take a certification test, these are kind of prep courses that you can take at your speed. And so, Thank you. And then if I could add from the employer perspective as an organization that uh, represents about 2,000 employers in the Manatee Sarasota area, um, once you're ready to take that next step, um, Employ Florida, which you can connect to through Career Source, or look, we have a hyper-local job search website that's a partnership of both Chambers, the Alliance, and other organizations as well, that's jobfocus.com. 
and that is really limited to Manatee and Sarasota County employers to post their jobs at no cost. Job seekers can use jobfocus.com at no cost as well. Um, so at any given time, you know, there could be hundreds of local positions that are open right now that you can connect to. Additionally, I know the Alliance, as well as both the Manatee and Sarasota Chambers, also can give you direct links to employers. So if you're targeting specific employers and don't really know where to start with those employers, you know, come, reach out to one of the business organizations. We can certainly connect you with a live person within HR and any of those organizations. I would like to add, we have a job board with Manatee Technical College, uh, manateetech.edu, where you can actually go, on, go in there and look under IT, and you can see if there are any job opportunities that are available. Then you can connect with those companies, see if they have tuition reimbursement. The, the key is to be trained in what they need you to be trained in. Yeah. And when you connect with an employer and they pay for it, it's ideal when you're not paying it out of pocket. Thank you. Uh, any more questions? Yes, ma'am. Are you aware of any initiatives going on behind the scenes to help bust this myth and therefore funnel more students into the, the technical colleges and these different pathways? For example, how do you let more parents know? Are you involved with parent groups? How do you let more career counselors know? Uh, what are the initiatives going on behind the scenes? I think I'm going to direct this to our technical colleagues. I think y'all do quite a bit of work in the, in the school districts, right? Yeah, so, you know, one of the things we do in Sarasota County is all of our high schools have a college and career center um, where they have a career advisor and their students are scheduled to come through. You know, for SDC, we go to the schools and we present to um, every, every demographic, every type of student you can imagine, if you, if you put them in whatever categories we tend to do. but. Um, you know, we've presented our fast track programs to the students and, you know, right out of the gate, we had three or four of our last automotive class came right out of the high schools because we went and presented. We brought, brought in some cars from Matthew Curry's. We had some text present from them and those students turned right around and joined our fast track program through Career Edge. So um, we try to present, we hit them. We have had tours from elementary students through high school students come through our campuses, see every program. We go in at 10th grade year when they start doing scheduling, right before they start scheduling, we meet with them and present the opportunity that STC has to all of our students so that they know that their junior and senior year, they can come to us and what that looks like and, and the different opportunities they have when they leave us. So we do quite a bit, you know, and then the rapid credentialing thing that just happened over the last year with the government, they gave us a grant to help boost these fast track programs. So we went from running you know, 40, 50 students through to 200, and I think 30 by the end of July will have come through or enrolled in these programs. And that's a lot of people out to the workforce very quickly, you know, within that two months. So there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff. I mean, we take it very serious when we work with um, all of our local um, outreach groups to push into the high schools, push into the middle schools, and make sure that kids know, here's all of these great pathways, and we line it up for them. So. There's a lot of stuff behind the scenes to really promote students to come to us. And I think it's it's cycling for sure, where we're getting more and more students. We've had to cap high school enrollments in almost every program because the enrollments are so high, which is um, it's, a, it's a good, bad problem. And this is where you can help. Um, we, we need foot soldiers, I think, uh, what we call them, to be able to carry this message on. We have a recruitment plan at Manatee Technical College that outlines the year. We have construction rodeos, we have manufacturing alleys, we have high school tours, we, we, we invite dual enrollment students in as well. We go directly to the high schools. All of the high schools have career and academic advisors that the students work very closely with. Uh, so we, we, we're on that trail, uh, but we can use foot soldiers as well to lead the charge with us, to get us where we need to be. Thank you very much. And so, you know, I think this kind of, you know, this goes back to what this whole program is about is busting the myth, right? So that the narrative or the story that we tell ourselves is very powerful because we tell ourselves all the time, there's only one path. It's go to a four year college, get a bachelor's degree. And so, you know, we do all the tours and we connect students opportunities, but that's still a hard narrative or hard story to, to get over sometimes. Um, any other final questions? Yes, ma'am. Um, what do you have to say to the students who are a little bit apprehensive of maybe taking a course, uh, 
pathway like this versus the typical narrative of four-year university in the way of that experience that they're they're thinking of the college experience, dormitory living, and the and the spirit school spirit activities on campuses and that type of thing. Like, what do you have to say to the students who have that in their mind that they want to experience that? Are there any programs? Is there is it fun? <laughs> we have a lot of fun each and every day. <laughs> so, so yes, of course, but we have to promote lifelong learning, and you have to begin with the end in mind. You know, they can still have that experience down the road. They're going to enjoy that gap year and earn credentials in that first year, but we need to promote lifelong learning, even if they're not going to a post-secondary institution. I guarantee you when they go to a job, they're going to send them to workshops for retraining and things of that nature. So the mindset needs to be lifelong learning. You start at a technical college and then you complete the credentials and then you continue. But what it does, it gives you a choice. You're not limited. You know, you if you choose after that first year to continue your education, there are resources there for you, for you to continue. So if you take the technical degree and then you do the two year, at that time you can decide, do I want to continue? But you're more mature as you go through the process and you're still getting the full experience at the end of the day, but the rush to get a bachelor's degree by 22, we need to bust that myth as well. We need to promote lifelong learning and let them decide. You know, like, you know, a lot of times we force it down their throat to say, hey, you're going to Ole Miss University and you're going to major in criminal justice and by God, you need to make it happen. But a lot of times the students don't respond to that. You're more passionate about what they want than what they really want. So a lot of times they have to work in that field. They have to enjoy it each and every day. You know, if they get up and they hate their job, that's not beneficial. And, student, and a lot of people make a lot of money that are not happy at what they do each and every day. So when we promote and, and, and foster their passion, then the end result will be what we want. I have to get quicker. Hang on. <laughs> He's quick on the mic. Um, State College of Florida, we have that campus life. The only thing that we don't have are dorms. We have athletics. We have very active clubs. We have student engagement. Um, my office is on the Lakewood Ranch campus, and at least once or twice a week, I find myself in Bradenton campus because that is a traditional college campus. And just to see the activity, even through COVID, our students were engaged. So I think, you know, after week two, I was sick of my dorms. But I also welcome you to take a tour of State College Florida and you will really feel that traditional college setting. One other thing I wanted to, to tell our high school students in the, in the room, um, for three weeks in July, we have summer learning. I don't want to call it a summer camp. So we're going to call it summer learning opportunity in STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. We still have some spots available. It's summer camp. Um, it's an all-day program, but you are flying drones. You're making apps, game design. You are really doing engineering um, type things, robotics. Um, there are still some scholarships available. So if you maybe are thinking, hey, I want a preview of State College Florida, or maybe something in the engineering, science, technology world might interest you, connect with me or go to our website and click on summer camps. These camps are specific for high school students. And each of the three weeks of camp, we have an industry tour. We're touring PGT, we're touring Turvis Tumblr. We want these uh, high school students to see the great jobs that are right here within our area. One of the weeks is all girls. We wanna promote women in engineering. So if you are looking for things to do in July, State College Florida summer camps, connect with me, we hope to see you there. All right, thanks, Terry. You know, I think that, uh, you know, let's say is, that it's not either or, right? So if you choose to, to do the MTC or SDC or SCF, that doesn't mean that you can't do the other, right? So, um, and I, I think that um, there's no one path for everyone, uh, but I think that there is one uh, mindset or process one should follow uh, throughout you know the course of your career, and that's to um, be curious, constantly always be curious, uh, talk to people and try stuff. Uh, if you do those three things, you, you're going to discover what, you're, what you what can become passionate about and what your career might turn into. Um, you can't try everything, so that's why the talk to people is important. 
so you get stories from other people who do occupations or are involved in some sort of industry that you can't possibly try all of them, but you can get other people's stories of what it's like to, to work in that, in that field, what their career path has been. And through those stories, you can then begin to kind of discover what you might be interested in. So uh, let's see, probably have time for one more question. Yes, sir. Um, I support Micro's foundation. Uh, Micro works, and I wondered if you all interact and if uh, they provide scholarships for people who would go into trades. Do you interact and, and are you connected with that foundation in any way? I'm not familiar with that foundation, no. It's you know who Micro is from Dirty Jobs? Oh, Micro. Yeah, He has a foundation that provides scholarships to students that will go into the trades. I just wondered if you all were connected, if you were connected with that. No, but I'll definitely look into it after this, so appreciate that. Thank you. All local foundations, the community foundations, have scholarships that uh, provide for technical colleges, too. So you can always check those out. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, well thank you all for uh, joining us today. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this back over to, to John to, to close this out. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this distinguished panel does not want to be behind the scenes. I want to go back to that, that second last question. I would love for, for this group and our intrepid subcommittee, Heather, Lori, Lee, where are you? please stand up. Without your work, we wouldn't even be here today. Um, Omar knows how long it's been to get to this stage. It's been two and a half years. <laughs> Exalted Ruler, uh, Jerry Diddy, and Lakewood Ranch, um, Elks Lodge 2055. This venue held this size group. We want to take this panel and Career Edge to the schools. We want to get to Booker. We want to get to Manatee High School. We want to get to Lakewood Ranch High School and Sarasota School. We want to be in front of the scenes. Remember all school assemblies? We want to have... Um, we want to have a busting the myths all school assembly so we can take this in front of the scenes so parents and students know that there are equally outstanding career opportunities for them. So thank you everybody for being here today. And before you absolutely leave, um, there's just a few closing comments uh, from our CEO, Don DeMaio. Thank you so much. I want to come back to the question because um, most of you probably don't know, um, I was a banker for 30 years. So I hired an individual who did not have a college degree to do a commercial banking role. Not a job that we would normally hire somebody without a college degree for. Um, but I looked at the young man who had trouble through his life, ended up getting married, having a child, and didn't have the ability to get to college. And I said to him, are you willing to go back and work hard to get your degree so that a few years from now, you have the ability to increase inside that role. Um, I say that so that you realize he had a Gainesville love. I mean, he is everything Gators. If you go into his house, it's orange and blue. I'm surprised he hasn't painted his house orange and blue. But really couldn't afford to do what he would want to do and have that college feel, and he never got it. Well, he gets it today. He drives a 45-foot motorhome to Gainesville for every game. Every game. <laughs> He has season tickets at Gainesville. He is not a Gainesville graduate. He went to school online and got his four-year degree. So it came later in life. He got the college experience. Um, he got the one he wanted, probably legally, because he's able to do what he should be doing at the right age. I don't know, we can all say that when he went to college. Um, so it's, it doesn't have to come in your first two years right out of high school. So that would be my answer, and as an employer, I still, this fellow lives in the area, obviously. Um, I still look up to him, even though I hired him and helped educate him. I still look up to him because he's an incredible individual. So take that out and realize that it doesn't have to come your first two years. Lifelong learning. I think that's what they're all teaching. Um, I, it's my job to close you out. I promise I will do that quickly. Um, we, you'll see if you're an Alliance member, and if not, you, you should be learning how you become one. Um, East Meets West is an expo that we do. We have 100 businesses that connect Everett Arts Arena. It'll be in September. It'll be kicking off um, very shortly. 
And um, I challenge you all to get there. To our students and parents that are here today, it does have a cost. I'll give it to you for free. Come out and see what we're doing with businesses. Come out and see those 100 businesses. Connect with them early in life and, and see what business is about and how we connect. I'll give you the tickets. So anybody from the student side, let me know personally and I'll make sure we make it happen. Um, we have Executive Academy a kicking off. That one I can't give you for free. Um, we do it with Game On Nation, a, na a local company here that is nationally and probably internationally known with companies that um, are much larger than probably anybody we have in our region. And it, it's the ability to connect and educate um, your employees. It doesn't have to be the executive level employee. It's, it's a program that's um, weekly and really challenges them to learn how to connect. So it's a, it's a great program. Coming up in July, uh, a networking social on July 7th and five to seven at the Homeward Suites, um, our, our Alliance open house. So if you don't know about the Alliance, wanna learn more about it, July 15th at our office, we're going to actually do some wine and, and beer and hold your ears, children, your kids, um, <laughs> and, and, and a little bit of snacks. So come learn about the Alliance on the 15th. And that same day we have lunch with ranchers at the Even Hotel um, our, for our, Young Alliance on July 22nd, they have their social at the Hyatt place. So, you know, plenty for you to do in the next, over the summer. Enjoy your summer. We don't see each other um, over the next month. And thank you for all for being here today.